Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Furious FPV RaceBit HD, a DJI Air Unit friendly version of the RaceBit F4 flight controller which I have previously reviewed. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs, show you how to install it and set it up, and on one of my next videos I'm going to test it out and also give one of these flight controllers away. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the flight controller you are getting four silicon grommets which are pre-inserted to the M3 30.5 by 30.5 mm mounting holes, a 14 cm long harness for connecting the flight controller directly to a DJI Air unit, and an 8 pins connector for connecting the flight controller with a 4 in 1 ESC, and as you can see it is only connected on one end, and the other end you will need to arrange by yourself using the provided 8 pins and 10 pins connector in order to match the layout of your 4 in 1 ESC. In terms of specs, the RaceBit HD flight controller is using an F4 processor and an MPU 6000 gyro chip. It features a USB Type C connector, 6 free UART ports, a dedicated connector for the DJI Air unit, and an 8V 2A BAC to power it up, an 8 pins 4 in 1 ESC connector, and matching pads on the top of the flight controller. You can power it up directly with between 2 to 6S LiPo batteries. It has a built in inverter for S bus and S port, a built in power switch that will enable you to turn on or off the VTX using the user 1 mode. The radio receiver can be mounted directly on top of the flight controller using pin headers. In case you're not going to do it, you can also leave it flat and then you'll be able to mount it directly on the bottom of the DJI Air unit. In addition, the weight of the flight controller is 8 grams and its outer dimensions are 37 by 37.2 by 5.7 millimeters. Now I'm going to show you how to install the RaceBit HD flight controller on the AJRC Sector V2 HD 7 inch frame. We have already soldered the T-Motor F60 Pro motors to the iFlex XX 60A 4-in-1 ESC and then show you how to configure it using Betaflight. First, in case you're not going to use the DJI radio controller, remove the two left silicon wires from the connector which is going to be plugged to the DJI Air unit and also remove them from the plug which is going to be connected to the flight controller. Then preferably using pin headers in case you're using a Crossfire Nano receiver, solder your radio receiver to the flight controller. In case you don't want to use the S-Bus inverter on RX3, you solder this soldering joint and solder the center pad with the right one. And in case you want to use user mode 1 in order to turn on or off the DJI Air unit, you solder this soldering joint. Now using this 8 pins connector, we can connect the 4-in-1 ESC to the flight controller, but before that, make sure that it matches the correct layout. The connector is using the same pinout of the RaceBit flight controller, for the right pin is VBOT, then the current sensor, ground, telemetry, which is mapped to UR2, then signal 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now after mounting the flight controller on top of the 4-in-1 ESC, we can connect the DJI Air unit. Make sure that its antennas are properly secured. Bind the radio receiver with your radio controller and secure its antenna. And by the way, I'm not going to do it in this build, but of course you can add other peripherals such as a buzzer and LED and GPS units. Now after flashing the flight controller with the latest stable available version of Betaflight and applying the custom default settings, let's go over the configuration. First I recommend to place your quadcopter on an even surface and calibrate the accelerometer. Here you can see the ports configuration using my setup. The serial RX is enabled on UART1 since I've soldered the Crossfire Nano SC receiver to UART1. The ESC sensor input is enabled on UART2. And I have enabled the configuration slash MSP switch on UART4 since it's connected to the DJI Air unit. Under the configuration tab, I enabled the ESC sensor and the bidirectional dish of switches since the 4 in 1 ESC which I'm using supports it. You should note that out of the box, the flight controller is going to come pre flashed with Betaflight 4.06, so the bi directional dish option is not going to be available. In addition, you have to make sure that your 4 in 1 ESC supports this option, and you might need to update its firmware in order to support it. Under the receiver tab, I've configured the Crossfire Nano SC receiver, and I also enabled the dish shot beacon configuration in order to use the motors as a replacement for a buzzer. Next, under the power and battery tab, Set the scale of the battery to 111 instead of 110, as otherwise your voltage reading is not going to be correct. Next, under the receiver tab, make sure that all the sticks are working properly. Define your favorite flight modes. Under the motors tab, check the direction of your motors, of course with no propellers. 
and in case you would like to use the Betaflight custom OSD, define your favorite OSD elements. I think that this is a good opportunity to remind you that the RaySpeed HD flight controller does not feature an OSD chip and video in and video out pads, so in case you are not going to connect it to a digital video transmitter and you want the same capabilities, you should go with the non-HD version. Now in case you need to do so, update the firmware of your 4-in-1 ESC and change the direction of your motors. And finally, after making sure that everything is working properly, you can wrap everything up. Now as you can see, my build is ready, everything is nice and clean, and since I've already tested the non-HD version of this flight controller, I'm pretty sure that it's going to perform great. That's going to be it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and it was informative enough, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. The flight footage slash giveaway video is going to be up soon, so stay tuned, and by the way, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to my channel, and hitting the notifications bell, if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.